All right, what's up, guys? Back here, Hello Bass, Rich Lingen, with another Fantasy Fishing Edge uh, podcast on uh, Lake St. Clair AOI picks. This is the last Fantasy Fishing for the Bass uh, Elite Series this year. Uh, make sure you check out the 10 killer wrap-up, see where you should have uh, zigged and zagged and how you could have had a better fantasy team, and then uh, make sure you check out all these uh, articles for Pundit Picks. Before we get into the picks, Make sure you follow me on Hella Bass at Twitter and Instagram. Make sure you don't miss out on anything and any good bass fishing content. Um, what you need to know about Lake Sinclair, this is the AOI Championship. It's a three-day event, only 50 angler fields, so only the top 50 are here, so you can see the buckets are going to be a little bit different. Um, expect a big sug fest with all smallies predominantly, um, and not a lot on the line for some of these anglers. So some of these anglers are pretty much set in their like point categories, so they don't have a lot to gain or a lot to lose in their OAI payout. So they're really going to probably just go up, have some fun, and really probably either you know catch the most fish they can or catch the biggest fish they can. So um, be be aware of that when you're picking your team. Um, and there's a couple guys you know right on the bubble of the cut uh, to make the classic, which really there'll be some you know <laughs> those guys need to take it serious. And then the top three, four, five guys at the top of the AOI, I'll be taking it really seriously, trying to bring home that AOI championship. The other thing is. This tournament on St. Clair is much later in the year than everything you are going to look at uh, in the history. Uh, most of the FLW stuff happens in like June, in the spring. Most previous events that Bass have done have been in kind of summer to late summer, and then maybe a couple opens in September. But there's really not a lot of late September, early October data to look at. But I expect the small malt to be putting on a heavy feed bag uh, and possibly hitting more power techniques, more crankbaits, more spinnerbaits, more topwaters, than your traditional what you've probably seen on Bass Live in the past of drop shots, tubes, and things like that. So keep that in mind as you're looking at your anglers and making your picks. Um, looking at Koi's picks, he says uh, he's kind of got his safe and his sleeper picks as he goes through each one. Um, all the pundits like Zaldane for good reason. He's having an unbelievable season. Um, but I kind of see it. Zaldane is probably not going to win this tournament, but I think he might pull off the AOI. So I think he's going to have another great tournament, probably get sniped by somebody with a big bag on the third day again, uh, but hopefully he pulls out the AOI. So for that reason, I'm going to take Chris Johnson. I like him to, uh, to get a win here, uh, to get a big trophy, uh, and Zaldane to have a really strong tournament. I think both of them are good picks, um, but I like Johnson to win. So I'm going to, you know, and for me, I'm out of it. I had a good season, but I can't win the overall championships. I can't nearly make up enough points, but I can win a single event. So that's what the uh, the angle is this time, is to make the very best roster I can uh, with a lot of chalk and a little bit of sleep and uh, try to get a win and win some gift cards from Bass Pro. <clears throat> so that being said, uh, his bucket A, Zaldane, uh, he likes Hartman. Uh, and Combs, which I think Combs is a good sneaky pick. He didn't have a great tournament last time they were here around St. Clair. But this time of year, he dominated a Malax event where he was cranking and fishing heavy full jigs. So Combs is in that same position again where he is locked into the Classic, can't really make a charge for the OI, so he's probably going to go out and really uh, look to do some damage in this tournament. Uh, Pipkins, I think, is an easy pick. I think Gussie is also a popular pick. I think both of them are great picks. Um, one thing I want to highlight here is that uh, if we jump over to uh, Instagram... Uh, Lee Livesey is already out practicing today. This is the first day of official practice. Um, this tournament actually is like Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, or Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, or Sunday. it's a real weird schedule. So make sure you get your your rosters in at time. Um, and uh, Pipkins, you know, yesterday showed off that uh, you know he knows a little something about Lake St. Clair. Uh, caught a big bag uh, with his wife uh, in a derby here last year. So uh, for that reason, I think he's a good pick. <clears throat> And uh, he obviously knows what he's doing. He's from Michigan. He has lots of experience. Um, Gussie is a good pick, too. But I think uh, Pipkins is a better value with the percentages in this pick. Um, here, uh, Coy has got Garrett Paquette, who's from Michigan. He's looking at the home time angle. He always also highlights Mosley, who had a second here last time the Elite Series was here. And he also had like a 30-something in a September Open. So... Not just a one uh, one trick pony or uh, one event. Uh, Mosley actually has a little bit of track record. Guy from Mississippi doesn't seem like he should do well here, but I think that those are both solid picks. Although there's not a lot of data for Paquette on St. Clair, but I'm sure he's fished a lot of tournaments there over the years. Uh, Bucket E, 
He likes uh, Mueller and Hudnall. I think those are both good picks. Mueller is the most natural fit for style and type of fishing. Uh, Hudnall's having a really good year outside of that 1DQ, and he's really looking to make that push to make it to the Classic. So he's got a lot to fish for uh, in this event. Jumping over to Robin's picks. Um, he's got that Detroit Rock City vibe. He says, go with your gut. Um, you know, a lot of similarities in the picks here. He likes Zeldane, uh, Lester. Um, Lester knows how to catch smallies too. Had a really good event at St. Lawrence last time they were there. Uh, he also likes Hartman uh, and highlights John Cruz is a good pick. Um, he also likes Pipkins and Gussie. Can't disagree there. Uh, you know, I do like Perch, um, but Perch just, you know, he's been letting me down on these smallies. He's done really well in the past. Um, so be leery of that one. He didn't have the greatest uh, event last time they're up here. He also uh, has the Sentinel backup as the hometown kid. Uh, and then looks like at Mueller and uh, Ed Lauren the third. A little skeptical of the uh, the lawyer here. I think that truly is a sentimental pick. There's not a lot of data suggesting that Ed's going to whack him this week. But who knows? Maybe Pete will prove us wrong. Uh, looking at Allen's picks, uh, you'll see the, the trend here continues uh, at uh, looking at Zaldane. Uh, and his go for broke pick is Lester. So the pundits are really aligned on a lot of their picks. He's got Combs and uh, Shane LaHue, which is a little bit interesting pick. Um, LaHue's a good angler, young guy um, at 2% ownership. He's looking for a sneaky pick here, going for broke. Um, I wouldn't be surprised on that one. Uh, he's got Gussie uh, and then Hank Cherry. Uh, it makes sense that Hank Cherry caught them up here at an AOI championship um, in a different Michigan lake. But the last time, a few times they have been on St. Clair has not been great for him. But this time of year, that jerkbait can play a lot more. So maybe Hank Cherry can really fish his strength and do some damage this week. Uh, he also likes Paquette and Mosley, which I think are some decent picks. But I have a sneakier pick for D, and we'll see that in a little bit. Uh, also likes Mueller and Hudnall. So a lot of the same thing from the pundits. Uh, I think a lot of favorites with the smaller field and the 50 boats, um, a lot of the experts are kind of locking on the same anglers. So let's jump into my picks and uh, see where I'm going this week. <clears throat> so, bucket E, I like Mueller too. I looked at the whole bucket. I tried to convince myself of somebody else. Uh, I thought about Hudnall. Uh, Jay Yellis and Clark Whitland have like been fishing tournaments on St. Clair since the 90s. But their track records are pretty inconsistent and the lake has changed a lot since then. So I'm going to stick with Mueller. Uh, going to go Chalk and Bucket E. Um, bucket D, um, I did originally go with Mosley because of the percentage. Uh, but then with all the, uh, you know, I think he's going to gain a lot of steam as people start looking at their past results, and he's going to move up. So I'm going to go with some GDP here. Uh, I really like Greg De Palma. Uh, I think his tactic of a jig in a Carolina rig that he used at St. Lawrence is going to serve him very well in a fall tournament on Lake St. Clair. So I think that's going to be a really strong technique, and I think he's going to surprise some people this week and have a really good tournament. Uh, Pipkins, uh, an obvious pick here. Um, the value on his percentage is pretty good here, being about 10% less than Gussie. I'm sure Gussie is poised to do well in this tournament, um, but Pipkins is really probably the most hometown, the biggest local expert in the whole field uh, on Lake St. Clair. And I think Pipkins has really started to figure something out later in his career. He used to be a lot more inconsistent. He really seems to be catching him now, and I, that gives me a lot of confidence to pick him this week. Uh, Bucket B, I think it's hard to go with Hartman. He's got two wins this year. Uh, I'm sure he'd love to have a third trophy. There's a lot of other talented anglers in this bucket, but I think it's really hard to go against Hartman uh, in his northern prowess for smallies. So uh, I look for Hartman to have a good week. I know he likes to power fish a little bit. You know, if saw him fishing that crankbait on Cayuga, uh, and I expect those techniques to play strong this week at St. Clair. And finally, uh, you know, looking for a winner here in bucket A, uh, just about any of these guys can do it. Uh, you know, the biggest thing here to watch from a fan standpoint is probably the battle between Scott Canterbury and Zaldane for AOI Championship. So I think both of them are looking to have strong events. Um, but I think Chris Johnson is the one to watch for the win this week. So from a fantasy perspective, I think he's got the most value in this bucket, uh, even over his brother Corey uh, and Seth. Um, but I wouldn't expect, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if any of these guys uh, had a good tournament. And uh, so I'm looking for Chris Johnson to win and Zaldane to somehow sneak out the AOI Championship over Canterbury. But I expect them to all have a very strong tournament and it come down to the final day. So there you go. That's the picks this week. Make sure you follow along on Twitter and Instagram at Hellabass. 
and make sure you hit the comment below. Let me know what you think who you, who's going to win the tournament and who's going to win OOI. And then uh, subscribe, like, and we'll catch you next time and hopefully help you suck less at fantasy fishing.